Good to Vote is a campaign that one of my Kickstarter backers works with. And his reward for backing my Kickstarter campaign was an ad in an episode. And he wants to advertise headcount.org, which helps people to register to vote. So here it goes. So if you're not registered or unsure if you're registered or you just moved, you go to headcount.org and they have a button there that you push that allows you to sign up to be registered to vote. And as a bonus, headcount.org has a bunch of little contests you can enter while you're registering to vote. There's a trip to the NHL Winter Classic, a tour of the Vsauce studio, a trip to Austin City Limits. Fun stuff. Add a line why you think it's important to vote or register to vote and don't make it political. I vote out of anger and rage. When I go into the voting booth, I'm just, yes, this guy, this guy, not you, no, this gal, this gal, no. And uh, it's a cathartic experience. So you can register to vote and maybe get some rage out. Say, no bare feet. Number 10, no bare feet. Pretty obvious forbidden practice, but my son refuses to follow it. And when he does, I warn him, and then I let him get hurt. Number nine, when making straight razor cuts, we do not use a straight edge as a guide for the razor. We first use a straight edge to draw a perfectly straight line, then we cut along the drawn line freehand. If you use a straight edge, it's almost always gonna shift a little bit while you're cutting, and then you're off, by the end of your cut, you're off by a wide margin. If you freehand, you're just off by a little bit and the line is sort of, is basically straight and then your gluing or your sanding will straighten it out good enough. Number eight, no fixing garbage. And by garbage, I don't mean something that you found in the trash and fixed. I mean manufactured garbage. I did the repair station in public. This kid brought a $1 Ikea picture frame and had me cut it down and shape it from a rectangle into a square. And I felt kind of insulted because it's a $1 piece of garbage and my time is worth a lot more than that. Bring me something, some precious thing that you've found or some interesting, beautiful thing that you've found. You know, cheap things, don't fix them. Throw them in the garbage and don't buy them ever again. This is basically your worst nightmare garden variety tripwire. Number seven, no tripwires. It's connected to a sledgehammer, goes around the leg of a tripod. When you're setting up your electrical things, all the cords have to be on the ground because if someone trips over your tripwire and knocks over your camera and breaks it, that's your fault. Number six, no robbing Peter to pay Paul. Tools belong where they live. Don't take the vice grips from the workshop kit and migrate them down to the Land Cruiser kit. The Land Cruiser has its own vice grips. Same is true for all your tools. No! Flathead! Screws! Number five, no flathead screws ever. This was almost number one, but it's not significant enough. Some things have flathead screws. Old typewriters, tripod shoes. But when we are fixing things, and let's say we're replacing a hinge on an old toy box, throw the flathead screws away and install with Phillips head screws. Some technologies are just meant to die out. Even Torx head screws are superior to flathead screws. Number four, do not 
clean me out. Do not use the last of anything. The last of anything is for emergencies only. When you get down to the last set of hinges, you got to go to Home Depot and restock on hinges. I can't exactly articulate what constitutes an emergency, but you'll know it when you're there. And in that case, okay, you can clean it out. But man, be careful. <laughs> Number three, no hoarding materials. I've always had small workshops with not enough room, and that's how I developed this forbidden practice. We all love the neat little interesting things that people throw away on the side of the road, but unless it's for the next project or the current project that you're working on, do not take it. Do not take it and save it for later. You're gonna have enough scraps from previous projects to use your imagination and build something terrific out of the scraps. And what happens is it becomes this addiction and all of a sudden you're a hoarder and you don't have enough space to make the things you wanna make. Salvage materials only for the project at hand. Number two, neither lender nor borrower be, but especially don't be a lender. Good luck cutting a steel screw when you've loaned out your angle grinder. If someone asks you to borrow a tool, offer yourself with the tool. Oh, I'll bring it over and I'll help you. Or buy them the tool as a surprise. But people, even people of high character, they don't return it when you need it. Number one, do not switch horses midstream. You must finish a project of its kind before you start another project of its kind. If you start a building project, you have to finish that building project before you do another building project. However, if you start a building project, you can get 50% of the way through and then start a new video project. But in order to do the second of either of those, you got to finish them. This forbidden practice was almost called no messes between projects about resetting your workstation every time you finish a project so that you don't just accumulate mess and tools everywhere in your life. And being able to clean and organize your work station is just a reward for finishing your project. And it also encourages you to finish your project. One project at a time encourages you to finish your project and rewards you with the right to move on to the next project. No! Flathead screws ever! This week on the Patreon, a live stream answering your questions. The link is right there.